Hello everybody, I'm Gloria Copeland. Billy Brim's here again today and we are so delighted to have her back with us. And she's gonna be talking to us about what, Daniel? What, yeah, the book of Daniel. We're on our second week on the book of Daniel. Wow. And uh, why are we studying the book of Daniel? Well, for one thing, Daniel is the only prophet who saw the entire times of the Gentiles. Jesus said, this will be until the times of the Gentiles are over. So mm. he's the one, the Gentile, times of the Gentiles started with the Jews being taken to Babylon. It's going to end when uh, the kingdom is given back to them. And so uh, it's a book that looks right over into the future and for right now. And it's very much in connection with the book of Revelation. Wow. So uh, we're going to ask them to play a clip that we began last week on Monday with, and we'll begin this week, of Justice Duplessy. And Justice Duplessy was from a family uh, in South Africa. And you probably know his more famous brother, David, who was known as Mr. Pentecost. But Justice was a man of God. He came to America. Actually, sweet man. actually the Lord sent him here with a word for a Kenneth Copeland Ministries and EMIC and their end time call. Uh, we're just going to play a clip of it. But he was going to speak that morning to the prayer group here at the Eagle Mountain International Church. And uh, he was late. And Pastor George and Terry, they began to think, what, where is he? Where is he? You know, it's quite a ways out here from town where he was staying. And um, he got in late. He was disheveled. He wasn't n looking like his normally neatly groomed self. And he had had a night vision of Jesus right. where Jesus had talked to him through the night uh, given him a word for Eagle Mountain, for KCM, but a word for all of us about the importance of the book of Daniel. And so um, here's what Jesus said to him. We want you to listen to it, and that's why we're paying attention to it this yes. week. First thing he said to me, you are going to speak to the church this morning. You're speaking to the ministries on prayer. I want you to be my mouthpiece. You intended to speak on Daniel and certain excerpts from that. It is good because that is within the guidance of my spirit and within the center of my will. But forget your notes. You're not sermonizing. Regard it as a prophetic spirit that has come to you through me. Tell them that the secret of those four young men, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, the secret was that they frequently prayed although they found themselves in a strange culture. They fasted. And as they will do what I am to tell you to do, they will feel my spirit resting upon them, equipping them, empowering them to go forth and be my people in a world that is not very different from what they found themselves in. Tell them to read the book of Daniel. It is a much neglected book. Some of my people have taken from it certain parts that they liked. But I would have them as a body to read the entire book. To commence with that reading individually and corporately as soon as possible. They must hear it word for word. They must note the number of times that these people fasted and prayed. And let fasting be one of the clear 
motivations in their life to know my fullness and to know my plan for them. Hallelujah. Folks, I tried to sleep, but this power of God rested upon me so heavily, so mightily that I, whenever God reveals himself to me, it's quickening and energizing. I did this morning when I woke up, I was dried out. It was a remarkable experience. I'm going to read a few passages which came to me at that time to show you the importance of this book. And Pastor George, I don't know when you're going to start it. The Lord says as soon as is possible for you to do it. Do it methodically. Do it faithfully. Both in your private capacities as a corporate body. Praise the Lord. Mm. And soon after that, Eagle Mountain Church did that and they invited me here and we went through the book of Daniel. And now that's what we're doing some years later. It's still in the Lord's eyes. It hasn't been long since 1996 when that was given. And so there should come now more revelation to us from this very important though the Lord said, often neglected book. For us to know what's happening, Peter tells us we have to look at the prophets. I saw on Fox News uh, that they said, um, what happens in Syria might be what the Bible spoke about. And then they said Egypt. And I thought, well, even people, are, e even people know that something's up. And so the Bible does speak about these things. It's the prophets that gives us a light in the dark places. And so we're going to read now this wonderful chapter three of the three Hebrew children in the fiery furnace. Have you ever felt like you were in a fiery furnace? Bless the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. All of us have. But I praise the Lord. I don't think quite to this extent. Quite to this extent. I don't no. think so, Gloria. No, you're right about that. We can't claim that. No. Mercy. But uh, we're going to begin to read it methodically right now. I hope you have your Bible there. And I'm going to be reading from the American Standard, the most recent um, up, you know, uh, revision of that. Verse 1, Nebuchadnezzar the king made an image of gold, the height of which was 60 cubits and its width 6 cubits. He set it up on the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. Now, we've gone into the history of Babylon. I hope that you can go on the archives and see what happened last week because we don't have time for that. But uh, this, um, this kingdom of Babylon was built right on the place where the Tower of Babel ha uh, had happened. Now, he had seen a vision, and in the vision, it was all the times of the Gentiles. Maybe they'll put that. I'm going to ask them to put that up for you to see. He had seen in Daniel chapter 2... Uh, the head of gold, these are all kingdoms that are going to come one right after the other. The head of gold, uh, Daniel told him, that's you. But you're going to be succeeded by a, 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 a two armed kingdoms of silver. That would be the Persians. And then the Greeks are going to come. They're the, they're the thighs and, and the belly of uh, copper. Then there will be the Roman Empire, the, the legs of iron. And then there will be the revived Roman Empire, partly iron, partly clay. So he saw all that whole image. Now, Nebuchadnezzar is imagining himself as that uh, head of gold. So he gets a whole image of himself made. Maybe it was an image of himself. It doesn't tell us exactly, but at least it was an image of gold. And with its um, 60 cubits high and width of 6 cubits, it really can't stand up. So uh, the Jews know it can't. So much no. for that. So, so much for that. But it was impossible for it to stand. But what they did was they went and got the, uh, some of the golden vessels that they had stolen from the temple, and they made a base for it to stand on. They were going from bad yeah, to worse. Yeah, they were going from bad to worse, which just um, fulfilled a prophecy that Ezekiel said uh, their gold will be for an object of disgust. Well. And so that gold became a part of this object of disgust. 
uh, Daniel 3, 2. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king sent word to assemble the satraps, the prefects, the governors, the counselors, the treasurers, the judges, the magistrates, and all the rulers of the provinces to come to the dedication of the image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. The Babylonian empire was huge. And it had all these provinces, and in the provinces it, they had leaders. And he told you, you all come. You come to Babylon because I've made this golden image, and we're going to dedicate it. So they came. They arrived at the uh, dedication. And uh, in Daniel 3, 3, they were told to face the image. In Daniel uh, 3, 4, the herald loudly proclaimed, To you the command is given, O peoples, nations, and men of every language, that at the moment you hear the sound of, it's going to name all kinds of instruments, music, you are to fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king has set up. Whoever does not fall down and worship shall immediately be cast into the midst of a furnace of blazing fire. Therefore, at, at that time, when all these representatives, and by being representatives, when they heard the music, they fell down and worshiped the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. So that meant that their province, they might have come from a far away province, when the representative of that province prostrated himself before the golden image, it meant our province is prostrating uh, itself before Nebuchadnezzar. Uh, but then here comes the accusers of the brethren. Daniel 3, 8. Wherefore at that time certain Chaldeans came near and brought accusation against the Jews. They answered, in verse 12, there are certain Jews whom you have appointed over the affairs of the province of Babylon. Now remember when Daniel interpreted the dream and then he was, he was promoted and so were the three friends of his. And these other people are jealous of them. They don't like it that they took some of the Jews and this is anti-Semitism in this too mm -hmm. and promoted them. So this is really a trap that they've set up here. There are certain Jews whom you've appointed over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have not regarded thee. They serve not thy gods, nor worship the golden image which you have set up. Now, you notice that Daniel is not here. So through Jewish history, we know that Daniel was not in Babylon at that time. Now, Nebuchadnezzar is full of rage and fury, verse 13 says, and he commanded that they would bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And in verse 15, he says, If you don't worship, you shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. Who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, and I'm going to read this to you out of a Hebrew translation, uh, the Art Scrolls translation of Daniel 3.16. Oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we are not concerned to reply to you about this matter. Behold, there is our God whom we worship. He is able to save us from the flaming kiln and from your hand, O king. He can rescue. But if he does not, let it be known to you, O king, that we do not worship your God. And before the golden image you set up, we shall not prostrate ourselves. Take that. Take that, king. <laughs> you know, there are beliefs and values worth more than life. Through That's the centuries, right. these have been exhibited many times, and they will be through the Great Tribulation. That's right. Gloria, I heard something, and I cannot tell you how I heard it. I'm not free to do so, but it was in a country, and um, a mother had been kidnapped by hostile uh, jihadists, and she had three children, daughters, and the grandmother, this is a taping of what happened exactly in that room, the grandmother told to the little girls they suspected they might get kidnapped. And she said, do not convert. There were Christians. Do not convert. Let them shoot you, but do not convert. Mm. And that grandmother was talking to children 12, 8, God, 4. And I thought, could I talk to my grandchildren like that, you know? But there are values that people stand up for right today right. In, the, in other lands. And um, that's what they were doing. And um, that will happen again in the Great Tribulation time. But, uh, oh, that made him matter than ever. And so verse 19, mm. then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury and the form of his visage was changed. Uh, other translations said his face contorted. 
you know, when demons mm -hmm. are operating through people, you can sometimes see it in their faces and in their eyes. Which one are you on? Now? I'm on, uh, I'm down here uh, on uh, verse 95. I mean, 95 ASV, 95 is the translation I'm using. Down at the bottom of the page three, Daniel 320. He commanded certain valiant warriors who were in his army to tie up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in order to cast them into the fiery furnace. Now I'm on page four, Gloria. That was some severe persecution. Isn't that the truth? You know, I thought today if people just talk ugly about you. I mean, you, yeah. They think they're being perfect. Oh my, they, they don't love me. But my Jesus. We don't know anything really here, Gloria. No, we don't. Thank God. Thank God. And so uh, uh, Daniel 3, 21 now on page four for you there. Then these men were tied up in their trousers, their coats, their caps, and their other clothes. Jesus. And were cast Jesus. into the midst of the furnace of blazing fire. I like to read um, Hebrew translations because they throw light on it sometimes that we just read that they had their clothes yeah. on. Yeah. But now they know why. And this is what they put in their note. They came wearing the clothing of their offices. They did not come in sackcloth and ashes as would have been done in that day when groveling before the king and begging for your life. So it didn't come like that. They came dressed up in their, um, the, the clothing that they wore as their officers. Yeah. Uh, verse 22 Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent and the furnace exceedingly hot, the flame of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. In the Hebrew translation, it says, a tongue of fire leaped out and, and, and burned them, the ones oh, that threw them in. Oh, my. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished and rose up in haste, he spoke and said to his counselors, Did we not cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They said, True, O king. He answered mm -hmm. and said, I see four men loose and walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt, and the aspect of the fourth is like a son of the gods. Brother Oral Roberts' most famous sermon and his most fourth requested man. sermon was the fourth man. So I'm going to read you this. Oh, good. I can't read it like Brother Roberts, of course, but these are his words. These three young men came face to face with this inescapable fact of life. True salvation will be tried. Whether God's people live in Jerusalem, Babylon, or Tulsa, Oklahoma, at some point we will have the opportunity to prove what we are made of. We will face some kind of ultimatum as these three young men faced, either bow or burn, either compromise or have faith. When Nebuchadnezzar said, what God can deliver you out of my hands, then, without a moment's hesitation, without the flicker of an eyelash, the three young men declared, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us. Glory to God. Filled with fury, Nebuchadnezzar ordered the fire to be heated seven times hotter. But when his soldiers threw Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego into the fiery furnace, the fourth man hurled himself through space and in a moment's time Ooh. was beside them walking through the burning fiery flames with them. And by the time the door was shut, the Lord had ripped off their bonds and clothed them with divine protection. When the king looked into the furnace, he shouted in amazement. Well, you Did know, it? I never had noticed that part. The Lord had ripped off their, he took them off personally. Yes. Yes, wow. Jesus came and in there and set them, them. Yes. With, which would be the divine protection, no doubt the glory of God. The glory of God. When the king looked into the furnace, he shouted in amazement, didn't we cast three men into the furnace? Oh, I like it. I see four men walking around in the fire, unbound, unhurt, untouched by the flames. And the for form of the fourth man is like glory the Son God. of God. Thank you, Lord. The fourth man had come forth in the urgency of the three Hebrew children's needs, subduing the crackling flames, robbing the fire of its violence, Ooh, and delivering God, them. Brother Roberts, preach it. <laughs> Nebuchadnezzar shouted into the flames, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, come forth. The three young men stepped out of the furnace, rejoicing and praising God, without even the smell of the fire upon them. Upon witnessing this mighty Hallelujah. miracle, Nebuchadnezzar declared, there is no other God That's that right. can deliver after this sort. Glory to God. And this truth is as genuine and eternal today as it has ever been. There is no other God, God. who can deliver like our God That's can. That's exactly right. Thank you, Jesus. And then Brother Roberts went on. It's very easy to meet this fourth man. His name is Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Once you receive him, he'll never leave you 
nor forsake you. He'll go with you into the storms yes, of will. life and he can bring you safely to the other side. I can just hear him preaching. I can, yes. And if you want to hear him preaching, I'm sure you can get that from uh, Oral Roberts Evangelistic Association. I want to get that. O-R-E-A. And probably they have DVDs of it. But bless the Lord, the truth of it is true. Glory to God. And after it was over, Daniel chapter 3, verse 30, then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. And you know, Gloria... So instead of getting burned, they got promoted. Instead of getting burned, they yeah. got promoted. Yeah. <laughs> now, you know, Gloria, that's true in life today. It is. It is. It is. And now this test didn't, we won't say it came from God, but he allowed it to happen. And whenever... It was no threat. No, it was no threat. And promotion followed. And if you walk in faith through tests, there'll be promotion for you. There'll be promotion for you in your spiritual life, promotion for us. You will have been an overcomer. We, you know, in the Bible, Gloria, it, 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 it never hints that we should ever once be overcome. That's right. That's it true. says we are to overcome the devil That's right. by the blood of the Lamb, the word of our testimony. Hallelujah. And of course, they love not their lives to the death. Yeah. We don't exactly have that to face. Some people do in the earth. Some, yeah, yeah, they do. Right. But, but each of us has to give up something in our life. You know, there's other things almost anyone could do other than serve the Lord. Mm-hmm. But, and, and then sometimes like when he'll call you, Gloria, to go somewhere and you rather stay home and rock on your porch. Yes, I know that. But, <laughs> but you love not your life to the death of it and you, and you go on. And you, you know who is, uh, who is really good at that is Brother Copeland. He does not want to quit traveling. He wants to keep going. We'll work till Jesus comes. He's working till Jesus comes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Isn't that awesome? You know, these things are real. I mean, it sounds like a a tale of Uh old, but that really happened. Just like the Bible says, and they really weren't touched. Hallelujah. (laughs) Billy and I'll be right back. The mystery of God is declared to his servants, the prophets. Bible prophecy is being fulfilled all around us. The world is guessing how it's all going to turn out, but God knows what the future holds. Discover God's unfolding plan for you and your family in the End Times Package, your spiritual preparation kit. Live in hope and without fear as you study the book of Daniel with Billy Brim's complete syllabus. Chapter by chapter, you'll learn what the prophets revealed about the days we live in. It's never been more important to be led by the Holy Spirit. Kenneth Hagin's book, How You Can Be Led by the Spirit of God, is an excellent resource to help you tune in to God's voice. Recognize the importance of God's calendar with David Barron's book, Types, Psalms, and Prophecies. Be expectant, get ready, and live in the hope of Jesus' soon return. Be sure about your future. Order the End Times Package today at a special savings for only $36.99. You'll receive the books and syllabus from authors David Barron, Billy Brim, and Kenneth E. Hagan. These End Time resources will bring clarity to help you recognize God's mercy and goodness given throughout all time. Order on kcm.org slash TV special or call 800-600-7395 for an additional 10% off order online. Hey, this. This offer, you're going to want to get it. I mean, we need to know these things. We need to be grounded in this. Our offer this week is the end times package. We want to recognize the times we're living in, and we want to get serious about serving God and doing everything He tells us to do. These study materials will help you understand what's going on. God knows how it's going to end, you know. He's got it all figured out. I have no fear of the future. (laughs) Glory to God. And you shouldn't have either. We can live victorious in these last days. Billy, tell us. Well, number one, to live victorious in the last days, uh, you need to know how to be led by the Spirit of God. Yes. So this is of utmost importance. That is absolutely Absolutely. Vital. I'm going to give you homework out of this one That's because... That's Brother Hagin. This book. is Kenneth E. Hagin, surely. And he certainly knew how to He knew that. how he demonstrated to us, didn't he, Gloria? Yep. How to be led by the he Spirit did. of God. Now, I'm going to be back in a month 
And we're going to be talking about some of the signs uh, oh, in the good, heavens, good. even the blood moons that are coming up and some of the dates on the, on the Hebrew and the God calendar. And I want you to get this type Psalms and Prophecies by uh, David Barron first and have it with you so that we can kind of go through it together. And then you can have a read up on that uh, sacred calendar first. Good. And then, of course, the book of Daniel, it'll be a syllabus. And I will have in there what I read today from Oral Roberts. But you can get that from OREA in Tulsa, Oklahoma, Oral Roberts Evangelistic Association. Might even find it on uh, YouTube. This? Oh, oh, no, are, you're, no. Uh, the Fourth Man. The Fourth Man. Brother yeah. Roberts preaching the yeah, Fourth we Man. Yeah, got, I've got to get that. I don't have that, I don't think. Yeah. That's great. You know, uh, Brother Roberts was so anointed. I mean, he was an apostle of power in those, all of all of his adult ministry, most of all, and he lived it out through his life. Ken and I began; we we were close. Billy was close, and everything good is what I'd report about Brother Roberts. Yes, yes. So we want to pray for you. We're going to be uh, in Branson in a couple of months, and you don't want to miss the Branson Victory Campaign. But first, and that's February 27th through March 1st at Faith Life Church. Father, we pray for the people, all of us. We pray for yes, ourselves God. today for, for insight and revelation and understanding of the times that we live in and of the callings that are upon us that we need to fulfill while we're still in this life. And we thank you for wisdom. We thank you for your power manifest. And we thank you for the healing anointing flowing into the people today. Now be healed. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, take your healing. This is Gloria and Billy reminding you that Jesus, Jesus is Lord. God's grace is abounding toward you. Go to kcm.org for word-based teaching and free resources to help you find the answers you've been searching for in God's Word. There's nothing hard about faith. Faith is really easy. It's just simply believing what God's already said instead of what somebody else said. Fear believes what somebody else said. Faith believes what God's already said. Come to a Kenneth Copeland Ministries event. The 2014 Branson Victory Campaign, February 27th to March 1st with Kenneth and Gloria Copeland at Faith Life Church in Branson, Missouri. The 2014 Southwest Believers Convention, June 30th through July 5th with Kenneth and Gloria Copeland and their special guests in Fort Worth, Texas. The 2014 Washington, D.C. Victory Campaign, November 13th through 15th with Kenneth and Gloria Copeland at the Hilton Memorial Chapel in Woodbridge, Virginia.